This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is all about beaches, how they form, and what are they. So we all have an idea of what a beach is. Maybe you live on near a beach, uh, near the coastline of some area of the world. Uh, maybe you are um, vacation or going to holiday to a beach um, in the year, perhaps during the summer months, whether in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, or maybe you just like seeing uh, images, videos, pictures of uh, beaches and, and, and waves and different uh, coastlines online, YouTube, uh, that kind of stuff. But this is a subject that is comes obvious because either you've been on a beach or know what a beach is, but the formation of different types of beaches haven't always been discussed. Now, tens of millions of people will go to the beach um, in the summer months, or even, you know, every day if you live near the beach, and it's part of your life, it's part of your culture, it's it's what you grew up with, what you're used to, I and mean, the ocean, um, the, the beach, the kind of uh, different kinds of sand, or different kinds of beach that you live on, and the changes that happen throughout the year based on wave action, seasonality, and also if you vacation in different parts of the world, you might experience different kind of beaches, different tides and waves and and uh, rip currents and longshore drift. And it's an amazingly dynamic, ever-changing world where you have the ocean meeting the land and the beach is that interacting interface, that, that middle ground where all these things happen and it's beautifully changing and a great place to look at geomorphology because it changes quickly. It isn't like a um, a rock strata or a rock bedding that could be changing over the course of tens of millions of years. These beaches can change by the season, by a couple of months, or even by the day, based on storms and hurricanes that come through or typhoons that come through. So we're going to discuss the different profiles of the beaches, uh, the beach morphology, which is pretty much how they form and what they look like after they form through different processes and look at the interacting systems uh, within the coastal zone that is ever ever changing and ever present that we can discuss and analyze so obviously beaches can be absolutely beautiful a left hand picture here uh, you've got a beautiful sunset um over the ocean you've got uh well, I, gr I basically grew up on a beach i grew up 10 minutes away from this beach right here right here so this is Chelporth Beach in Cornwall England and I grew up pretty much um, in oh, Three Milestone which is a 10 minute drive from from this beach it's a National Trust Beach so it's kind of like uh, run and operated and overseen by the local government um, in Cornwall and uh, you can see an old tin mine right there, which is Will Coates of an of a uh, you know 17th and 18th century tin mine industry that then left to Australia um, and kind of left this area kind of like uh, without any kind of major industries. But it's you know 200 foot cliffs. It's a beautiful um, coastline and great place to grow up. Also, you might have a beach that's purely uh, just beautiful sand. Beautiful soft yellow white sand, maybe even formed of old uh, old seashells and carbonate. Or you might get this kind of rocky, very rocky uh, beach right there. Again, all these beaches have different profiles, different formations, and a different character. So join me now. So what is a beach? A beach is the interface... between ocean and land. It is dynamic. It is changing and it also changes and works over a short time period. When comparing other geomorphic processes or geological processes that work on a much larger time scale. So what we're looking at basically is, you know, the ocean and land, and this basically is the beach right here. We have the land, and we have the ocean or sea 
right here. So this is the, the interface, the interaction between the two large processes. Okay, now the land is more consistent. And you have you do slight changes, obviously, through weathering and erosion and the process of removing uh, material from the land through fluvial systems, which is all rivers and streams and, and lakes and groundwater, and moving it over the beach and through river deltas and groundwater and into the ocean. And on the other hand, we have movement of material uh, being suspended or carried or pushed by the ocean, by the currents, by the wind and the, and the wave action onto the beach. So the beach is a uh, confluence. It is a meeting point of these two processes. And it is, again, dynamic and never changing. So the beach is a basically a byproduct of erosional erosional deposition erosional products or materials that have been deposited in this in this location deposition so again based on what we know from geology and processes that we can have different material be eroded and weathered and transported and then uh, deposited in this area both by land and by ocean and we'll get varying products we'll get a varying material being put there now when you think of a beach you think of a sandy beach that's the most common most uh, portrayed uh, variation of a beach now I showed you at the start there's there's rocky beaches there's pebble beaches there's beaches that are very wide very narrow very long very short um, beaches that change daily or even seasonal uh, between summer and winter. So, but the sandy beach is the most classically known uh, type or product of of beach that is shown. So, how are beaches formed? Now, we know that the beach is the confluence, the interaction, the the the, the medium between the two uh, processes. Now, obviously, we have here the ocean. And we have the swell, the obviously tidal action as well, but you have the majority of the waves moving on shore and you've got some nice breakers there. You've got some nice um, wave bores and some nice uh, sheet uh, swash waves coming up um, and pushing up onto the, the, the beach face. And this movement of the water and the, 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 the patterns that are created from the wave energy from the swell and the wave um, sets and also the the interaction between the swash and the backwash and you can also involve also the longshore drift if it's not symmetrical and the currents and you've got the rips as well but the movement of the water carrying sediment. So it carries sediment within the water and it's going to push it up onto the land and form a big pile of, of uh, deposited sand, as you see in this picture. This is a picture of the Outer Banks in North Carolina and you've got this slight berm, this berm right here. So there's the beach face. And the berm basically is this elevated little ridge right here that has been produced by consistent deposition of, of sand. And also it's above the high tide mark. And the low tide mark would be like out here. So you've got this, this nice little intertidal area right here, but you have this this lighter sand showing that the water is still going to affect this part of the beach, the beach face, and uh, occasionally storms will push more sand over this berm. Depends on the strength of the storms and the wave action, but you have this d definitive like edge uh, separating the beach face from the the back shore over here, and maybe some possible dune systems or near the near dune systems, the four dunes. 
So the profile, the profile of the beach would be the side view. So you take this beach here, you'd have this uh, slope in here, the berm and the beach face and then under the water. So he'll be my there and push up. There we go. So he'll be my berm, which is right here. And then the beach face, which is this part right here. That's the face. And also you have the swash and backwash and uh, wave action could be a bar right here, or a trough or a bar depends on the wave action. And you have the incoming swell and wave action with the uh, surf zone, the breakers. Um, okay, creating the, the, uh, the balance. Now the profile can be created by a balance of pretty much the constructive nature of the wave action producing and adding more so accretion adding more sand to the beach to build it up that generally happens in let's say the summer usually and then versus obviously the opposite destructive so more erosional processes happen so this would be occurred mostly in the winter depends on the latitude and location where the wave action would be stronger more severe more continuous and it would actually um the backwash would break and push oh wrong color would actually take away the sand and create a different profile it, it would change the shape it would cut away at the sand creating a new shape and therefore creating a new profile so this would be an example of a profile or a side view of a summer beach. Again, this would be the Outer Banks. So I'm going to put OBX right there. And now you see a change in the picture. You've got a very, uh, like a, basically a, a cliff right here going down there. So you've got the beach face right here. You have a lot more wave action, a lot more energy and a lot more erosional qualities and basically that sand that was here has been basically eroded away and transported by the very strong backwash the rip currents longshore drift and has taken it back out to sea maybe creating a larger uh, bar or shoal off offshore but has removed a lot of the sand that was here and transport it back out to sea so this would be more of a destructive profile and this would be usually what you find in the winter again this is OBX alright so as an overview a beach is an area of coastline whereby it connects and interacts with both land and ocean. It's formed through wave action producing uh, unconsolidated, unconsolidated material, so separated material that's uh, derived from erosional processes and then deposited in that location. And you can get different kinds of material, therefore you can get different kinds of beaches. For example, sandy beaches versus pebble beaches versus white, pink, green, different beaches based on the eroded and weathered material it comes from. There's a lot of um, iron in the material that's eroded and weathered. You'll get a red sandy beach. A lot of quartz minerals eroded. They'll get more of a white and yellow sandy beach. If you go to Hawaii and see the beaches in Hawaii, you'll get a very black, dark sand because it is volcanic uh, rocks, basaltic rocks being broken down and creating the sand. So you get a black beach sand, which is really awesome to see. And then you have the different strengths of wave energy and tidal energy, which creates different beaches as well. And then the profile of the beach is the side view that can change, and it's the byproduct of the forces acting upon it. Then you get the balance uh, of the beach, how it changes with seasons, the summer versus the winter, uh, with different wave energies and climate and, and wind and wave patterns and swells, and also the availability of sediment. You can't build a, a, a beach without sediment or material. And you also have the balance between the constructive 
nature of beaches that are going to build the beaches up larger and larger and larger uh, or on vice versa the opposite is the destructive processes that are going to erode and remove sand or material from the beach making it smaller or more uh, harsh gradient part two of this video will go into more detail about the profiles and the different types of beaches and also the wave dominated tide dominated and tide modified beaches thank you so much have a nice day